futures and options on futures trading involve substantial risk and is not a suitable investment for all types of investors. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future results. When I use the word I in this video, it refers to what I teach in my charting course or what I author in my twice daily oral and written updates. Prices shown on charts and quote boards are in real time and take into account all known activity up to this point in time. And if you'd like to read more of this disclaimer, simply hit the pause key on your video player. Good weekend all. Ira Epstein of Linden Associates with your metals market update for this Memorial Day weekend version. Tongue tie there, right? And it's May 25th, 2018. And yeah, I'm early. It's 2.05 in the afternoon. But this is like watching paint dry right now, okay? The traders are gone. Everybody's going away for the Memorial Day weekend. Et moi, me too. Can't look to do it uh, and enjoy myself and then come back to the markets with a fresh mind in three days. And that's going to be the fun of it all. Now, if we take a look at metals, just on a monthly bar chart to start with, and that's what we do on the weekend edition. We start with the monthly, we go to the weekly. I had a question in the webinar on Thursday. Uh, would I recommend trading off of monthly or weekly charts? And the answer is I, I, you could but I don't. That does, that, that's the right way to answer it. You could if you want, I don't. The problem is the bigger the chart you go to, monthly, then a smaller ones, weekly and so on, often the bigger the risk. And that is your decision. Now if you, you, you know, and the daily chart, the moves you're, you're playing a different type of pattern, they're happening much quicker. They're happening much slower on a monthly chart. I mean, this chart since 2016, I want you to look, has been going sideways. I don't care how anybody wants to talk to you about it, you can't get away from the visual. It's a sideways chart. When you look at momentum, it's just sort of limping along. The market has been able to stay over the 18-week moving average of closes, I'm sorry, 18 month moving average of closes in red, which is right now 1275.80. It's challenged it over the different months in 2017. It's pretty well stayed away from it so far in 2018. It's been dropping a bit, but hasn't hit it. The obvious resistance is the 100 week moving, I said it wrong again, the 100-month moving average of closes on, in the green and the upper Bollinger Band. Those come in at 1365 to 1351. So what would I call the chart? Well, I'd give it upside bias, and that's all that I could say. Momentum-wise, it's trying to turn down, and you see that in price as well, but it hasn't succeeded. Close under 1275.80, I will not be surprised if then you even put in the 1200 zone as a potential uh, target. On the weekly area chart of closes, if I can get my grammar right, uh, the most recent high after the break close was this is what you broke from, the 1353 level, down just recently, if right here, to 1291.30, and you're up for the week 1070. Okay, but you're still under the 18-week average of closes, which I think creates downside bias in the market. Let's take that chart further and take a look at a weekly bar chart. Do you disagree that up through here, we had pretty much sideways action going in the market? Then the market started right here on May 4th to come down, had a bounce, and then it let go. This was the 18th, and this is how you're coming in right now. So the market has a mini breakout to the downside. When you put on the swing line study, you do have a pattern of higher lows, higher um, lower highs lower lows my grammar today is crazy lower highs measured by the red arrows lower lows that's bearish what would break that pattern is getting over 1326.30 the 18 week moving average of closes you can see how it was arcing that was the key and the market gave up on it simple now where's the next potential support the 100 week average at 1277.70 is a moving average. The 200 days well down here at 1233.70. There might be a better support when I look at Bollinger Bands. The Bollinger Bands are these black lines. And what Bollinger Bands are, are an algorithm designed to keep the market trading within it 95% of the time. As a pro, one of the things that I'm telling you is the first time the band hits it on the downside, upside, wherever it's at, 
I teach in my charting course and when you're on our website at www.irapstein.com go into the word education and look at that course. I promise you I can teach you this concept quickly and in a way that you're going to understand. It's really that I believe that wholeheartedly. Well the market came down and you're bouncing away so it's the combination of Bollinger Band and the 100 week moving average of closes that are supporting the market with resistance back at 1326 and momentum is still pointing down. In plain English, there's nothing bullish on this chart. When I come over to the gold ETF, the popular one GLD, lower highs, lower lows, darn it, it's, it looks just like the futures contract. You got to the Bollinger Band, you've held it, challenged the 100 week average and momentum still pointing down. GDX is different. Now this is the gold miners ETF. The first thing is I see flat momentum, not downside momentum. Second thing, I see a market that's stuck on the 18 week moving average of closes. I do see a market that's got a pattern of lower highs, lower lows, and if it settles like this, it will be under the 18 week, so I'd still be bearish on the chart. So in the gold, there is absolutely nothing friendly that I can find. We then get to the silver chart. Silver's much more interesting than gold. You have a pattern here of lower highs and higher lows. Do you see that? I think it's pretty easy to see. Momentum is flat and the battleground has become the 18 week moving average in red of 1655.80. If this market can get over 1672.50, the 1718 through 1730 zone becomes the next target. A week ago I wrote a silver report for all of you. It's still valid. Nothing has changed on my breakout points. In the copper market, like silver, the market's just sort of stuck here at the 18-week average of closes. A decision's going to be made. You have a pattern on the weekly chart of higher highs, higher lows. You're going to finish this week under the 18-week average, so even though the swing line's up, the bias is down, the two fight each other, you've got nothing, and momentum is flat. Interesting, but nothing to do. In the platinum chart, you've been bearish. You've had a pattern all the way through of lower highs, lower lows. You finally went to the lower Bollinger Band, sort of sat there, and you still got your momentum pointing down. This is in the bear camp. In the palladium market, you have a pattern of higher highs, but lower, lower highs, but higher lows. I'm telling you, I'm screwy. I want to go home. <laughs> higher lows, lower highs. Under the 18-day average. Let's call it nothing. Momentum is up. I'm going to call the swing line legacy up, but countered because I'm getting those lower highs, a big fat nothing. Dollar index is powerful. Now we're going to finish out with this week over that upper Bollinger Band. Last week over it, that's two in a row. This week we finished 9109, but the upper Bollinger Band was here. It's only two weeks over the upper Bollinger Band. 5% of the time, a market will trade above or below the Bollinger Band. When it's in succession like this, I count each week as one of those five percentage points. And yes, you're going to say, Ira, what if it gets to six? I'm giving you rules of thumb. Go count on your own on the charts. You don't get there very often. You'll bounce around it. So it's is it a good idea to buy the breakout points over a Bollinger Band? Maybe that would be the better question. And what I teach in my courses, no, it isn't. Does that mean you shouldn't do it? You do whatever you want to do. That's what I teach. And the market is saying, yes, I, I've got momentum. I'm pointing up. Maybe I'm going to run to the 200-day average up here. Maybe I'll get to the 100-week average. I don't know. And that's not day average. That's 200-week average, 100-week average. Don't know, but I know that the odds of staying over that Bollinger Band are 3% next week. So to me, I think there's better ways to enter if one is bullish. And that's what I'm all about, trying to give you ideas. So what I do is a lot of research. And I love to write my own research. I've been doing this 50 years. I spend during the day, I write a morning report, an afternoon report, and I make you a promise. Unlike most traders, and I'm putting out trade recommendations during the day, I am not sitting there glued to the screen. I find it 
lighting a candle in my office, gluing myself to the screen, saying a few prayers just doesn't seem to work. You have to have a game plan. And in my research, I set you up with game plans. Now, the research can come to you in two ways. Some people don't want my trade ideas. I get it. Makes sense. For them, they don't want to get screwed up with what they're thinking. Makes all the sense in the world to me. But they want somebody's ideas on the market, not for trade. What do they see? What are the reports coming out? How are they going to be taken? So my research comprises two parts. I write a commentary part first, and then I add trade recommendations. You can buy it in either version. Got it? That's the beauty of it. So if you go to our website at www.irapstein.com, under the word research, you're going to be able to learn how to work with all that. You can sign up for a free trial to it. You can see what it looks like, and you take it from there. But I guarantee if you take a look at what it's about on that research, you're spending more on a cup of tea or coffee a day than what this is going to run you. That's what's important. What if I can come up with one idea to help you? I may come up with none, but I'm trying. I'm Ira Epstein. You have a great Memorial Day weekend, and I'll see everybody come Tuesday.